What's up, guys? It is late. I apologize. It's almost 10 o'clock. Um, I was out with the wife, and I kind of really forgot what was going on tonight, and I said, oh, crap. I got a stream, uh, got a stream with the wife's, or a stream on YouTube, so don't blame her, it's my fault, but we're here, uh, hopefully several of you, uh, want to join me tonight, and we'll talk for a couple hours, or 10 minutes, 30 minutes, 5 hours, I don't know, let me pop the chat out here. What's up, Mike Perez? What's up, Big Red Bass? Oh, we're doing good here. So, one thing I want to address is some people said that, um, like, they're trying to watch me on YouTube, and I had it on my phone, and a guy said, did you know that YouTube is blocking your channel that, um, sorry, no logos unless you pay me, uh, Long story short, they said that they're tr they're trying to watch my stuff, and uh, it's it's like block, like YouTube saying this is pro um, it's parental advisory or whatnot. So, what it is, if you're not signed into your YouTube uh, Google account or whatnot, uh, a lot of times uh, it won't let you. It, it does it on my cell phone, whether I watch a kids thing or I'm watching something else. If I'm not signed in, a lot of times. It'll give you a black screen and all this stuff. So, yeah, man, appreciate the sh shirt. I haven't bought new clothes in like six years, so I decided to splurge, and uh, I, I bought this shirt. I appreciate it. It is pretty old school, you know. Uh, I'm not the best looking dude out there, so I just take what I get. But uh, anyway, we'll, we'll just talk some baits tonight. I didn't really have an idea of what I wanted to talk about. Uh, I hadn't got a lot in this week. Um, been, a, been a slow week for the baits for me anyway. But yeah, appreciate the compliments on the shirt. The wife actually picked it out. But I did get a few baits this week. Finally, some production run. Axis crankbaits from Six Cents, and uh, I'll be honest, I, I didn't get all my order, but uh, they emailed me about it, and I said, "Look, if somebody else needed them, I'm cool with that. I'm just the just the guy that talks about them." So I wish I could link the iCast baits. Not a lot of people are putting anything out. Um, I'll be honest here, and I don't mean this bad, but uh, ooh, my Strike King sources have kind of dried up. Like, they're really afraid that I'm going to, like, tell Six Cents what they're making. And I'll be honest, Six Cents does not care what Strike King's making. So, but, uh, here's the new Axis. This is Backwater Bluegill, man. I really like this color. Actually, one of my favorite square barrel colors. And it's a really good lipless color. Um, but, it, this is going to work really good. Uh, and one thing is, the bill isn't gold. This one has that muted color bill on it. So, it's Backwater Bluegill. We got that one in the Axis. Um, if you've got one of those, let me know your thoughts on the Axis right now. Um, it's a unique bait. Uh, it will, I don't think it's going to take the place of my 100X or 50X square bill, but it's definitely got a place to shine. So, all right, here's a couple good questions rolling in. What do you think of the Jackhammer Stealth? Um, my volume's low. Well, I got my mic tucked in right over here. Let's get the mic over here, see if that's a little bit better. Uh, I don't know how to adjust the volume. I've tried everything, uh, and I will tell you that YouTube compresses the audio quite a bit, too. So let me see if I can fix this volume range settings. Uh, audio. My range. Let's see if this helps a little bit on a YouTube. But so, uh, uh, answer the Jackhammer Stealth. I think it's a really uh, cool deal. There are a company, dude. I told you no. There are a couple of dude, uh, other companies that actually have a clear blade. Uh, OSP does, and the Jackal Break Blade um, have clearish blades on there. So it's nothing new. Uh, but again. 
The other ones aren't a jackhammer, so me, I'll probably buy some. Um, let's see here. Someone talked about Casey. Uh, thoughts on the Geek Crack Bellows Gill or the Blade Walker? So Blade Walker is definitely unique. It's a, it's kind of a half wake bait, half bladed jig, half swim jig. It's a really cool idea. Um, I definitely want to try it out. I think over the tops of grass or just around laydowns and stuff like that, it's a really good idea where a normal wake bait with treble hooks, you can get hung on a lot on certain things. And I like the idea of the blade walker. Uh, I would just take the, maybe take the skirt off if it was me and, and throw some kind of soft swim bait on the back of it. I think that would be a really unique uh, deal. Uh, the bellow gill is a really cool bait. All right. No, Casey is not a good one. Well, it's not that my friends at Strike King won't tell me. It's they've had a few things happen, and they um, they don't want a finger to ever be pointed at me. And that's not against me or nothing. It's just like there's some people and things going on right now where a lot of people are pointing fingers saying he leaked this to this guy and this guy leaked this and you know, that's the bait industry man nobody wants to be uh, copied and stuff like that and it's going to happen so as far as I know they got the, the hybrid hunter coming out which everyone knows about that I think they got a few different size soft plastics and new colors and kind of the same as they do about every year so um, yeah, they're, they're looking out for me. No big deal. So I'm dr I'm drinking Mountain Dew, man. That's kind of my deal. Just straight up Mountain Dew. If y'all can see that and I don't spill it, just straight up Mountain Dew. But, uh, all right. So here's a double wide jig from Beast Coast worth it. I like the tungsten football and flipping. Yeah, I like the double wide. It's a little bit more compact, and it's got a really stout hook in it for its size. It is a great jig. What's up, St. Cress? I am definitely here. Yes, uh, Zoom has come out with a few new baits. They've come out with a mid-sized brush hog, which is actually the size of a Strike King game hog, because the game hog is in the baby, and any big, it's good and mid-sized. Um, they've got a Magnum Utel worm, I mean, they already got an old monster. I guess they and the big dead ringer, and then they've got a magnum sized speed crawl, which I like that. That's cool. So, Rich, I appreciate using that code, man. Uh, it's been about two and a half weeks with, with, since I had the live stream uh, where I said no dip. That's how we're going. So, I about had a meltdown the other day, boys. I mean, I I was ready to go to the gas station and uh, I forgot my wallet, and then I was so dang mad I just said forget it. So. Seven beers in. Ooh, I can't even go. I go about three, and I'm I'm done for. Yeah, what well, I am looking for the Magnum Speed Crawl. I have a ton of Speed Crawls. I'll be honest. I need to get rid of rid of them. What's up, Perriman? Got two axes and two catwalkers. Man, I like the catwalk. It's a really good bait. Um, I think I showed you guys, but I finally I got a Spanish bone one. Man, I I love that Spanish bone color in the catwalk. That's a nasty bait, and I think they. Six cents, you know, I ain't riding their jock too bad, but I'm just gonna let you know they make one of the best looking bones out there. I love that, uh, their bone color, which unfortunately in the light it kind of sucks. But that Spanish bone, I like it because it's got that pink iridescence to it. I really, really like that one. Love the catwalk, great bait. I tell you what, is a good bait, it's really underrated. Is the freaking mag dog. If you want to go after big bites on top order. The mag dog is where it's at. However, it's got two hooks. It's my only issue with this bait. It's got two hooks. Mag dog with three hooks, dude, that'd be the deal. Yeah, most bones just so it's really funny. Like uh, Strike King's bone is not bone; it's white. Uh, like their sexy dog bone is white. Um, Hedden's bone is really good. The original is bone spook. Uh, and then reaction innovation, their vixen, it's like in between both. But dude, Spanish bone right there from Six Sense, that they've 
they knocked it out. That's the bone color I look for. Yep, Rapala's bone is white. So bone is really, it's almost an off yellow. Uh, Whopper Plopper bone, a lot of people say, well, it ain't bone. It's actually a really good bone color. Ooh, dadgum barking spiders already tonight. So, I got some stuff I got to put back in a, the box here. I've got a mess going on in the bait room. Dude, Bahama Milk from Mega Bass is really, really good. That's a, another good one. This is a good bait, too, man. Very underrated, man. The Dogma. I love the Dogma. It's got the, it's basically the same mold as a Vixen, a Tekel, all that. It just doesn't have the, that one knocker style. But it's loud. Dude, that's the only knock on Rapala, man. Sometimes their lips are terrible. But man, the freaking DT6 catches fish. So is the DT16. Man, I didn't eat Taco Bell night. I had some shrimp and seafood, and it still might be getting to me, so... I got the dog went in a catwalk package. Man, how smart am I? So here's the other two uh, axes I was able to land. There's going to be more dropping. So y'all need to pay attention the next week or two. But dude, Wild Chad. Wild Chad's a good looking color, man. It's almost a jank. It's jank juicy-ish. Doesn't have as much chartreuse, but I, I love the back of it. I like the Wild Chad there in that axis and you see a lot of people thought that lip was going to go up and down it's going to chatter it really doesn't it just vibrates side to side so the deal is you'd want the ass end to kick the opposite of this different style bait um it's got a lot of roll to it um and it will blow out a little bit if you reel it too fast but this color's been out for a long time the wild chad has but it's been kind of redone. It used to look really kind of, and I don't mean this negative, it used to just look real crayonish, like a kid painted. Now it's got more of a custom paint feel to it, but I might have to crank up the lighting even more. I don't know what's going on. Maybe y'all can really tell now. Yeah, that's wild, Chad. There we go, good and focused in. Sometimes the camera don't want to focus well. And then the other one I got, you know, I had to get me some shad scales. So I figured I would just get the craw colors in the spring because it's so far away from spring already. So, what is your opinion on the line tie snaps? Seems thin. I like small snaps like that. Like uh, Jake Lawrence on his scrounger uses an itty bitty trout snap. Um, it is thin, but you know, I don't think a bass is going to break one of those. Could be wrong, but. I'm willing to risk it. If I was going to change snaps, I would put the hog farmer snaps on there a little bit more heavy duty. And then, y'all know, I had to get old shad scales. Look at that. This is an awesome color bait. I had to get the shad scales and the axis. That's just one of the best looking colors they make all around. Oh, man, that thing is nasty. Sorry about my nails. I need to cut them. I'm sorry. That dude... That is Shad Scales. Oh, this one, Shad Scales, eliminate the not 4K Shad, but I do think they might have that one. And that's really it. That's about all I got in. I, I've got about three pairs of sunglasses ordered from uh, Waterland, and some t shirts, and some stuff like that. Lunkers and lure fishing, great question. If you could pick three axis colors to fish Kentucky Lake right now, what would they be? Uh, they would be, I wouldn't go fishing at all. It is absolutely terrible on Kentucky Lake. I'm not trying to dog my home lake, but it's the hardest I've ever seen it be here. Big man, you see it took 24 to win the tourney on the Chesapeake. Dude, that's freaking crazy. It is a big bag. Uh, I've... My buddy, Hunter the Hammer, has been on the channel before. He had 18 pounds on Pickwick today. Um, and then a buddy of mine had almost 25 pounds on Lake Monroe, Indiana. Evidently, 
Indiana's a place to go. It's funny, all the Indiana guys used to come down here to Kentucky Lake and say, uh, man, our fishing sucks. Now guys from Kentucky Lake are going to Indiana. Dang, Sean, I hope to hear that, man. I hope I wish you a speedy recovery. Yes, I will explain the difference between a needle point and a cutting edge. So, uh, a needle point hook. Um, let's see if I can find one. Let's see if I can find a needle point over here. All right, we're going to have both here. <clears throat> See if I can find a needle point. Uh, all right. All right, so. Owner makes both styles. This is an Owner 7 aught. See that package? It says cutting point. See how the, it even shows the tip of that point is kind of rounded? So what it does, and cutting point points are good hooks. I still like owner hooks. Cutting point goes in, and it cuts it all the way. It just keeps cutting. A needle point sticks straight in. Now, some guys really love a cutting point hook. You're going to probably get more hooks in a fish's mouth. However, they tend to fall out. A needle point which this is a needle point style. Gamakatsu almost has all needle points. It's going to take a little bit more effort to get the hook in there, but it doesn't come out. It just depends on what bait. I personally don't mind cutting points on big baits, uh, like big treble hooks. Don't bother me too much. Um, certain worm hooks, I'm fine with a cutting point. But if I'm flipping, I want a needle point. Any kind of finesse stuff, I really like needlepoint. Oh, I got all these daggum hooks. Dude, Jackal makes good stuff. All right, Dustin, we talked last week on burning crate bait eight to one ratio. Found out he's is an LC two point zero DT. He's burning. Well, who's Dustin? <clears throat> Excuse me. Did you watch the kid from Bethel? Yes. Uh, so, he's a good dude, man, and he just made uh, a mistake. John Garrett will win a Bass Elite event if he ever get, if he gets to the Elite Series. He's a dadgum good fisherman and a super nice guy. He just made a mistake, man. We've all been there. We just haven't ever done it in the open or something like that where it costs us a whole lot of money. So, Devin, you're right. It's not just Kentucky Lake. It's, uh, there's a lot of places right now that it's tough, you know. I think what's happened is we've been really lucky the last few years, and we've had some pretty warm springs, and the fish have gotten active really quick. And this is kind of the way it used to be. When I grew up, Kentucky Lake Ledge Bite didn't really turn on until mid to late June. Uh, those fish hung around shallow, and I think that's what's happened, and people are really frustrated. Now, they can't go out there and graft 5,000 schools. And my buddy just got done fishing Pickwick said, man, it's been pretty tough, and all of a sudden this week, I ton of bass got out everywhere so oh yeah yeah dustin taylor's a good dude and he def he's a great fisherman as well david i don't fish with wobblehead a whole lot i've done really good with putting a d-bomb on a wobblehead and someone said man bear pig that's one i've put on there uh, the six cent stroke across is one I definitely want to try. I haven't done it yet. My buddy Brandon Hunter, he does really, really good with the stroke across on there. And a biffle bug, I hate to say it's just it's really, really good. But a uh, strike king uh, structure bug is a really good uh, wobble head bait as well. It's that bait's just super versatile, uh, and it's kind of like the stroke across. You can use it so many different ways. Jesse Osborne, I agree with that. That's the thing. Emerald shiners don't migrate kind of like threadfin shad. And as long as those emerald shadow, um, 
emerald shiners stay around in that four to ten foot of water range and don't really migrate out to the main lake i think the bass are going to stay behind now i have had some buddies said the top water bite is fantastic like you can find them those shiners in the morning and you can pound those fish really good but once the first hour or two daylight's gone it's tough The missile quiver on a swing head is pretty good. I I don't throw a lot of straight tail worms on. Oh, god, dang spiders! I don't throw a lot of straight tail worms and stuff on uh, biffle heads, but I know guys that do. It's something I probably need to try a little bit. So, dude, uh, Royal is a hammer, but the super fluke is good everywhere, man. It's not just Texas, man. Uh, the lake he's fishing has got a lot of really good clear water, a lot of schooling fish. And it's really good there, but dude, you can catch them on a fluke anywhere in the country right now. Really good bait, especially when they start uh, feeding up on shad. Like I said, man, I I wasn't too crazy about the stroke or crawl. Once I use that, I might do. This is the deal. Yes, I did see them fishing a, a wobblehead on Watts Bar Lake. You'll probably see a lot of videos in the future. Tactical bass in Tennessee. Do I have any new swim baits? Man, I don't really have any new swim baits. Um, I sure don't. Uh, Neko Macho, I've been thinking of buying that. Uh, Dix is running a good sale. You buy five fishing lures, you get five free. But unfortunately, it's Dix, and I couldn't find anything I wanted to spend money on. All right, good question. Bought a couple packs of G Finesse hooks today. How heavy a line would you tie on them? I use the same line I always do. Um those are really really good hooks now if it's flipping uh, i'm not going to flip braid with them or anything yes yeah, so i did see where mlf is going to sturgeon bay instead of champlain so pretty good move on there you're going to see some giant smallmouth weights like 100 pounds of smallmouth in a day it's going to be crazy yeah uh that that's crazy uh uh jesse my buddy uh, he said they had almost 18 pounds in their tournament. They said you can throw a drop shot and a jig and worm can catch as many as you want, but not a lot of size. They caught, so they caught their bigger fish uh, on a swim bait this morning. So, 100 people on here. That's awesome, man. Uh, I know it was late, and there's probably people watching. I got super short shorts. Darian uh, do his want to be live thing and whatever. So, my man Danny B talks up in here. Danny's got like. He's almost past me in subs, man. I'm really proud of him. He's a great dude. So we tried to film a good dirt track video tonight at Taswell. Rain hit. Come on to Kentucky Lake. Danny, you got myself, so give me a call. We'll have to meet up and go eat dinner or something. I actually may go to Pickwick next weekend. So Deep River Bass, and I have not tried Salsy Swim Baits. Uh, you know, he don't own that company anymore. But anyway, I haven't used them lately, but I'm willing to give them a shot. I just... The ones I, I can't find the color I like, so I've just been waiting up. Yes. Uh, did I see Ben Milliken's new video? It has this new weight bait. Do you know the name? He said Tactical Bass and uses it, it as well. Uh, the Noisy Docks, I don't have one. It's an evergreen bait. It's a freaking awesome bait, too. Matter of fact, on the down low in PM, uh, Mike Bucus said that's the best weight bait out as far as he's concerned. He really likes it. And so if Mike Bucus says it's good, it's good. So, What's the deal with the muscle back crawl? It looks so lame and basic. Not a big fan myself. So, Dude, new scum frog is sweet. Uh, someone did catch a 10-pounder on one. I think it's like Oklahoma's worst bassin'. So. Robert Linson, you might want to come off a few of those seven, uh, flat A's, buddy. Danny B talks. I'm just going to tell you, um, if you fish where I think you're going to, you can catch 5, 12, to 14 inches pretty pretty quick. There's some fish hanging around there. So you text me tomorrow, and I'll get with you on some stuff. So.
Yeah, I'm not just a huge fan of Dick's Sporting Goods. I don't really don't care about the politics. Mostly, it's, they ain't ever got shit I like in there. They used to have good stuff, so. Thank you, Will Perryman. I appreciate it. Oh, man. I hate having a mustache. You get a little hair up here, and it just drives me insane, so. Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. If you smash the like button, if not, no big deal, so. Live Target meat, Magnum Deep Diver any good? Found some on sale. I, live Target about anything is not very good. I'm just going to be straight up with you. I'm not going to Scott Martin you and try to sell you my Live Target frogs. And by the way, you got to put your drink in an Engel cooler. And if you don't, um, I'm just, the only thing Live Target makes I, I kind of like is their normal frog. And I do like some of their their, their wedge tail swim baits. They're not bad. Ooh, best walking frog that doesn't have a popping mouth like a gabacho. That's a very easy one. It is the Spro bronze eye frog with a close second to the snag proof Bobby's perfect frog. They work really really good. I love the Bobby's perfect perfect frog. And it's a good mat frog, but it's really good in open water. Um, Woo, I got some comments here. Ho, ho, hold up, hold up. When am I getting a kayak? Man, if uh, I'll ever get stimulated and get my tax money back, I might try to. I don't know what is going on. Maybe they just said I'm so freaking poor I don't need anything. No, they probably said, oh, this guy makes money off YouTube. It ain't much, so we're not going to stimulate him. Dude, I I wish I would have had a camera. I got it at another store. We've been through this where Lunkers TV did the video at Shills, and first he shows a huge wall of Guggen stuff. It's all stocked up. The next shot he shows Six Cent stuff, and it looks about like this right here, and there's stuff, a few things gone, and he says, yeah, this stuff's really flying off the shelf, LOL, and then pans to some Guggen baits, not a big spread at all, and there's some gone. And I'm like, dude, that was like the worst analogy I've ever seen. But I, I've i got it on video of somewhere where there's a ton of six cents gone and like all the Guggen stuff is just stocked up. I'll be honest, uh, I have nothing against the, the Guggen baits or whatnot, but in the grand scheme of things, for the most part, your Zoom, your Berkeley, your Missile, uh, that's going to outsell that stuff. You're going to get a lot of stuff out to the kids, though. What's up, Hella Bass? Oh, man, my... I gotta save Danny B's number in here. I'm sorry, this is boring. Got Danny B talks on my phone. Uh, Mega Bass Big Gabbit, that's a good frog, man, so. Yeah, um, sorry, I'm boring. You guys heard it. Uh, I I think Danny, I'm gonna let you do voiceover. I need I want to do some Bateman Danny B style videos. I think I'm just gonna let you do the voiceover. It's really hard to read your own self. Uh, I know that. Terminator frogs are pretty good. Good guy on Kentucky Lake, Jake Lawrence. I'll type it out here. Jake Lawrence Outdoors. That's the guy you need to call. Uh, if he can't do it, my other recommendation would be Brandon Hunter. But Brandon's going to tell you like it is, so his Jake it is kind of tough. I wonder what I paid for that big gabbit. I didn't think I paid much over $15 for it. Let's check out what it is on TW. Mega Bass Big Gabbit is only fifteen ninety nine. 
Nobody got no make make me hollow money tonight, and it's all good. So, yeah, uh, I always liked that old Strike King frog that had like is like the. Uh, my PayPal is in the link to the description of my videos. Um, it's like PayPal. I, I don't. I'll put it. I, it's on the description of my video. So. Hmm. I like the new Z-Man Chatterbait. I personally like. Uh, I'm not worried about the clear blade, but it's a really cool deal, and I could see where it's really good in clear water and lakes. It's really pressured. It did not look like it had as much vibration as a normal jackhammer. Maybe it's just me. Um, I'll tell you when lures got so expensive is when people started paying for them all the time. So if nobody would have bought a Vision 110 jerkbait from Mega Bass, if nobody would have bought Lucky Craft, and stuff like that. Sean Lye. $10. Make you holla. Appreciate it, Sean. Uh, eight hours in a BFL with no bites. You know what? I've been there. It's happened. No big deal. Whoa. $5. Make you holla from my man Danny B. Talks. Why well, waste... Four ninety nine at the bait store when I can waste four ninety nine for Bateman's advice. Absolutely, man. Uh, and the thing is, I'm probably gonna give you four ninety nine back the next time I, if I catch you uh, doing a live podcast, Danny. I, I appreciate it, man. Us YouTubers got to work together. So, a Magnum Rage Bug substitute, uh, Big Biffle Bug, and uh, possibly a Magnum D Bomb if we ever get uh, done with that. Uh, the new jackhammer is supposed to have a tighter wobble. Yeah, I think so. Uh, be glad you don't fish offshore. Lunkers, bass fishing is cheap compared to that. Yeah, dude. Offshore fishing is really expensive. Yeah. Yeah, Pointer and Sammy, people started handing out them $15 bills. It's, I know it's not a real thing, but what I'm saying, $15 at a time for all that stuff. Um, what's my favorite Whopper Plover? Believe it or not, I got to shut this door, too. bugs in here believe it or not my favorite whopper plopper is uh the one is the the uh, the 70 uh i like it really really well it makes a different noise now everybody throws the 70 um it's killer man it, it's really killer especially uh pressure situation you can throw it up in creeks and stuff i like it a lot if i'm not throwing that i throw the 110 Oh. Yeah, Shelbyville. Uh, I had a buddy, uh, two buddies that got checks there at Shelbyville, though. Um, let's see. I have not tried the Tekka Blade Walker. I was trying to order it from Hookup Tackle, and they kept out. Um, and then I saw Tackle Warehouse has them in stock now. So I'm going to try to... I want to order from Tackle Warehouse, but, man, I'm not waiting two weeks. So what I'll probably have to do is make, like, three orders and add overnight to all three orders. And thing is, on overnight, if it's more than three pounds, they won't overnight. Yeah, bud, you heard me say Magnum D bomb. I'm not saying it's happening. I'm just saying I've been there. The rumors out there. Uh, just picked up the G2 shell cracker. Been having a lot of luck lately on smaller wake and five and seven pound this week. Dude, G2 shell cracker is very versatile. You can fish it just like a square bill as well, but it's it looks so good wake. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, I had no problem paying 10 bucks for two days shipping. Billy. Mm. So, I had a lot of people message me about the Huckleberry Color Zoom Magnum Trick Worm. And I had a lot of people message me and say, hey, bait man. I found those worms for you, and they send me a picture, and it's the normal trick worm. I need the Zoom Magnum trick worm in Huckleberry. And there's a place over in Virginia. It's called Virginia Guide Bait and Tackle. 
a lady runs it and she has some I can't get her to answer the phone so um, what size rod do I recommend for top water walking baits I'm a six foot six six foot eight guy I don't like going over that I feel I can get more action out of a short rod one I'm not real tall but I love I think a short rod you can get decent distance with a six eight it loads up good and it's easy to walk. So, the thing is, and I keep seeing people really get down on Tackle Warehouse, and I'm not going to because they're, I have told they're basically down to very minimum staff. It's like skeleton crew, and that's all. I just want about two or three packs. And it's Judy Henry is the guy. My bad. Well, sorry for assuming. You know, I, I could be wrong. I never ordered there. But it's Magnum Trick Worm. I've had three people say, Bateman, I've got these worms coming for you. And it they send me a screenshot of the Zoom Trick Worm. Magnum Trick Worm. It's really hard to find Huckleberry. So, what's up, Bob Fish Nut? Chris, if you bought them all, you know what, bud? You keep them all. Um, I'll, if enough people ask for it, eventually they can uh, make it. So Summerland Outdoors, that's a great place I've, I've heard a lot about. Um, and then you got uh, Hookup Tackle, which they're great people. I have not heard any rumors of a new NRX. But I can find out. I have not fished much in Indiana, but I did work for FLW, and uh, we had the Hoosier Division one year. It's a pretty cool lakes there. Uh, Ohio River is pretty rough, but uh, I like Monroe, and I could see where Patoka could be good at certain times. Yeah, have you, I don't know if you guys have walked in Academy or even Bass Pro lately. Their stuff's bare, man, a lot. Unless the stuff is made in America, and even some of it, uh, it's been it's hard to get and restock, man. It really is. Chris Jones won his Tuesday nighter on the catwalk at Shad Scales. That's awesome. I've thrown it around in, in the pond by my house just to mess around with it. It I like it. Wow, new NRX are coming back. Here's the thing. I don't know what you do to make the NRX better. It's an amazing rod. Um, maybe change the real seat, and that's about all I know of. I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited about that big ultra speed crawl. That could be a really good uh, wobblehead bait. A big speed crawl on a wobblehead. Don't think there's going to be a new Corrado. Uh, usually, it's about every. About every five years on a Corrado, on the K is only two and a half years old. I don't think you'll see a new Corrado for a few more years. The Corrado K is so good and it sells so well. I'm not sure Shimano is even considered putting a new one there. And they may do like a, um, you know, you know, you've seen the DC in it. They may do something like a MGL uh, K or something like that, but they're not going to just rebuild a whole new reel. My opinion on the double flopper, double plopper. Now, if you're talking about the buzz bait, it's really changed. Uh, when I first got it, I thought it could be cool, and I actually tried fishing it, and it's dog shit. It's cool to throw in a pond and whatnot, but the double plopper buzz bait's dog shit. I'm just letting you know. There's a reason people can't give them away. I think if you could weight it down a little bit, it'd be better, but... Huckleberry is not a standard zoom color. It is a custom color. Um, it was a custom uh, color for uh, Pitman Creek Wholesale. Yeah, I want to say Old Bagley. There's one. This is a little Balsa B1 Bagley. It's got the brass hard hardware on it. Got to appreciate uh, 
my buddy uh, Brian Stuckey for sending me this. Uh, not gonna fish with this one. It is an antique. Love that color though. That's a classic Bagley color right there. Let's see. I do know the Corrado 70 is coming. That is a fact. New Corrado 70. You did miss a little bit of the Axis talk. Um, that's the first of the video. I do like the new white packaging. I guess that's the official logo. They're shad scales. It's amazing. Sometimes these colors look better right next to me than they do like that. Oh, shad scales. Axis. Loving it. Phone's going off too. I've got a message on Instagram here. I would imagine you get some really interesting zoom colors there in Georgia. Oh, I got a cool message. Six cents fishing. Wishing me a happy Father's Day. I appreciate that. Uh, from Casey. Good dude. Oh my gosh. Dustin Taylor, this is the frog wall at Bass Pro Shop. I might have more frogs on my wall. Holy cow, look at this. That son of a gun is empty crazy yeah i have seen the new uh, Pittman creek rock crawlers is blue crawl and a couple others uh pretty nasty i love the rock crawl that's a great bait so out of the hospital now i went fishing lost two janes at the bank using a six inch hud baby bass patterson dude that's more fish you've caught on a hud than i have bob i've never caught a fish on a hud i don't even own one um The rarest flat A I have is probably uh, the one I have in that uh, it's like a clear purple back. I, I've only seen it on eBay like once. God, there's a big ass bug in here. You gotta check out the new. Uh, seen that? Okay, hey Kev, with the CI4 for sale, BPS could Shimano be coming? Yes, a new a new a new Stratic is coming. Uh, I do know that from Shimano. Anytime you see Bass Pro or Tackle Warehouse discontinue a big high dollar Diver or Shimano, uh, chances are that's what happens. Uh, well, AJ, here's the deal. I ordered two wild shads because I wanted to do an Axis giveaway. Uh, I ordered two wild shads and two shad scales, and I want to do an Axis giveaway for just my YouTube guys. And uh, I got refunded as well. Uh, things happen. I'm glad I got my three. Uh, oh, my goodness. Monty Mac, you don't have to do that to me, brother. I appreciate the Happy Father's Day. And Monty Mac, Happy Father's Day to you as well. I seen old Blake working on the tractor. He's he's already working for the ducks, man. Um, Y'all guys want to go on a good waterfowl trip this fall? You need to get a hold of Blake Wims over there at uh, Mallard Estates Outfitters. I might even come down there and hang out with you. Uh, Monty and his son they run an awesome waterfowl um, outfit down in West Tennessee and. First class all the way. I, rumor has it sometimes they watch Bateman live there uh, at the lodge. But appreciate you, Monty. Uh, I was actually thinking about you today. I had someone on Facebook add me from Halls, Tennessee, and I didn't know him. I was like, I wonder if Monty Mac knows these people. So, yeah, so, Joe, here's what I was told on the CF4. And this is a rumor, I don't know if it's true, but supposedly a guy in East Tennessee bought at, uh, called every Bass Pro he could and bought what they had. Supposedly spent like $40,000 of CI4s, and he's going to throw them up on eBay. No problem, Monty Mac. You know I'll take care of, take care of you. We just got to go fishing or, or hunting, that's all. End of June and Lanier spots are blasting top water. Dude, Lanier spots are awesome. I fished Lake Lanier one time in the middle of July and it was so freaking hot. Golly, this daggum bug. This bug's about to knock me out. 
Yeah, let's see how four strikes is a really good one. So, normal price on that rail is two hundred and twenty nine dollars. They had them on sale for one forty nine, which is crazy. I know. Here's the thing, man, and I hate to say it that I don't want to make people mad, but this is America, and capitalism is real. And uh, you know what? If I had forty thousand dollars to buy Stratix for one hundred twenty a piece, I probably would do it if I could resell and make for one sixty and still make my money. Because when they're out, you can't. It doesn't matter. They're not at that price no more. But they were on sale at Bass Pro Shop for one hundred forty nine a piece. Like they, that's. And I'm just going to let you guys know, and I probably shouldn't say this, but that's basically dealer cost uh, for a Stratic reel is $149. But here's the thing, man. Uh, thanks uh, thanks for that $10 make you holler on PayPal, Deep River Bassin. And Oh my gosh, I'm going to refund you the money. You're not allowed to put my first name on here. Holy smokes. Uh, yes, my name is Kevin. Please never call me by my uh, real name ever again. But I appreciate the $10 make you holla. Big man who makes Academy stuff. Um, I'm not sure. It's made overseas. But actually, for the the H2O stuff, it's pretty good. I'm just messing with you, Deep River Bass, and you ain't bothering me my, none. Uh, most people don't know that. That would be a good Bait Man trivia night. What is my real name? Dude, this hair's got to get back going fast, man. We're getting rough over here. I know. It's, it's all good, bud. I, pre I appreciate the $10 make you holla. I think, actually, Academy stuff isn't bad. Gander Mountain stuff was always kind of iffy. I did see some pictures... Uh, the new 13 fishing reels. Uh, I actually seen them for sale. Some dealer had them for sale already, which is pretty crazy. Um, but uh, I don't know, man. I'm just... I'm not paid by 13 fishing. And I don't really care if I... Care if I was or not. But I'm not a big fan of the 13 fishing reels. I like the rods, but... Thanks. I appreciate it. You know, I want to do something different. Uh, I actually took my wife out again tonight, so she's been really good. So I've let her out of her cage, and we all went uh, out to eat at the Keg in Murray. If you ever come to Murray, Kentucky, great folks over at the Keg. Great steak, great shrimp, and my daggum kids behaved amazing. And I'll say this. My waiter came over to my table. Dude had a six cents fishing hat on. I said, nice hat. And he said, you're welcome, bait man. Never seen the guy in my life, but he was pretty pumped about it. So, Daiwa spinning reels are the shiznit. I've got a Tatua spinning reel. I'll put it up against a CI4 Stratic. I really, really like it. So, Dude, if you got the money, uh, go to the Tatula LT spinning reel. But if you don't, the Dival Fuego at $99, I, I promise you, it's an amazing one. Hmm. <coughs> How many people we got on here? We, we broke 100 yet tonight, guys? Dude, I'm telling you, the Tatula, anything... Almost at 200. We're going. Let's see what else is, is going on here. All right. Boop. Concept A3 is one of the best swim bait reels I've used. I, I like it better than my trains. You know, I, I played with Fluke Masters. It wasn't the A3. It was... Uh, a big concept Z. I'm not a big concept Z fan. I like the frame of it. Um, dude, Red Corrados were nice. 
Uh, Dival Rebros for forty nine ninety nine is an amazing spinner. I'll be honest. I'm a big fan of the Tatula LT. I just I feel it's really a lot. My favorite way to fish uh, offshore throwing a big crankbait or swim bait, uh, but I really like throwing a worm. I'm a pretty I'll be honest. I'm a pretty good worm fisherman. I, I like catching them on that worm, but. Um, Make sure you guys hit that like button for me uh, tonight. Share if you want to. No big deal. I hadn't even posted on Facebook. Um, most most people aren't on Facebook right now anyway. I'm trying to catch up on the comments. Fished for eight hours a day. Went to switch my SD card on my chesty and dropped it in the water. Hell of bass. Rookie mistake, man. Anytime you change the SD card, you got to sit down in the boat. That's... That's like my biggest fear. Anytime I'm messing with my cameras, batteries, SD cards, I always sit down in the middle of the boat. So if I have some slippage, usually it falls in the boat. That saying that, one time I changed, tried to change a camera battery, and I tried to pop it off when I did. It just kept going and went in the water. So, Yeah, dude, that axis is a crazy wide wobble. Uh, I don't think people understand, but it like goes way out there. Like a normal wide wobble would be something like this. On a crankbait, axis like rolls like this right here. Uh, what is in that slinger package mid shelf behind you? Slinger? What's a slinger package? You mean silver? Luckily, 128 gig cards aren't as expensive as they used to. I remember when those SD cards first came out, 128 gig card was $100. You can get one for about $35, $40 now. Yeah, dude. Axis and the Waddle Bat are the craziest action crankbaits out there, I feel like. All right, so Zach Levi makes a good question. He put a point out here. He says, you see that the Kayak Fishing Derby paid out higher than the BFL on Kentucky Lake the same week. That's fake news. I hate to tell you. The <clears throat> the BFL paid out co-angler and boater sides and paid all the way down to almost 30th spot. Whereas the kayak term only paid out to like 13th place. So, and here's the deal with the BFL. Money that goes to the regional. Money that goes to the All-American. All American is no entry fee. You're guaranteed to check in that thing. So, um, it's kind of apples to oranges. But I did see where the kayak guys caught them really good, like as good if than the top guys in the BFL. So, the only thing I have about the kayak tournament. So the guys here. This is just my rant, and I've already put it on a kayak form. The guys were saying, oh, well, we beat the BFL fishermen, and those BFL fishermen, they're just weekend warriors. We're better. We're kayak fishermen. We're catching more fish. Dude, you can literally weigh in a 10-inch fish in a kayak tournament, or measure a catch photo release a 10-inch bass. 15-inch minimum in the BFL, and they only had a three-fish limit, okay? So, you can say all you want and say, all oh, the kayak fishermen caught more fish. Well... If the BFL guys could weigh in less than 15 inch fish, it'd look totally different as well. So, oh, the weed slinger. This guy right here. I pulled this thing out before, Billy. I've even, uh, I've even gave some away. I pulled it out last week. Matter of fact, the guy that won the giveaway of these weed slingers, a Black Dog Bait Company, right here. He was like, dude, I love it. I caught a four pounder on it, like third cast. So, obviously, it's a pretty daggum good bait. And it, uh, whoo, shooey. Big red bass, I'm just going to tell you, there's a lot of fake news out there. And that is the fake news on Major League Fishing. Somebody, not saying who, <coughs> Andrew Upshaw, started this big thing how Major League Fishing guys couldn't choose fish bass or flw uh but they can there's nothing in the major league fishing that says you cannot fish the bass opens or flw coastal series or flw tour 
as long as it didn't peak, compete with the schedule. And certain Bass Pros, because it didn't fit their agenda to make Major League Fishing look bad. And when I say Bass Pros, I don't mean Bassmaster or FLW. I'm just saying a fishing pro in general. Because it didn't fit their agenda, they put some fake news out there. Or because they didn't get an invite to Major League Fishing. I'm going to be honest, there's a lot of guys that are butthurt they didn't get an invite. Uh, it's going to be an awesome event at Chickamauga this week. FLW at Chickamauga. Uh, Kelly Jordan's fishing. Jason Lambert. Uh, I believe Justin Atkins is fishing. Uh, rumor, KVD. Chickamauga during an FLW event. Yeah, dude. It's going to be pretty nasty. Like, if you fish the Bass Pro Tour, now you had to pay an entry fee, they're going to let you fish this Chickamauga event in the FLW series. Uh, going to be some absolute hammers in there. Woo! It's hot in here. Spitting some truth at people. I'm interested... You know, there's this weird contingent of people that swear that Major League Fishing is going to lose like half their anglers at, at the end of year three. And that Major League Fishing is not making money. Dude, they're, they're doing fine. Um, will they lose a few anglers? Yeah, I think they will. Um, but it's also really funny to me that some of these anglers that were on the internet bashing FLW and talking how they're Major League Fishing, how they're going... Uh, they're going to go to the Bassmaster Tour because they want to fish the Bassmaster Classic and the Elite Series. Dude, a lot of those guys can't even make a top 50 in the Opens. They're done. They burnt their bridge with FLW. Yeah, uh, Scott Martin bombed the Arkansas River. He's out. No way he qualifies to the Classic to that division. He'll have to go through another uh, Open division. Dude, Ace Texas Fishing Forum uh, was the first place I heard, or Texas Fishing Forum was the first place I heard um, about uh, Lunkers TV. They were making fun of him really bad. That's right, Shadow Bass, and it doesn't matter who goes to Major League Fishing, who don't, who goes to Bass, there's always going to be someone to fill that seat. Um, I, don't, I didn't see where Scott finished, but he was dead last after the first day um i think 12 pounds got a check so he might have made a comeback but uh i don't think scott's going to qualify for the elites in that division but he's fishing all of them uh, that's the thing about the opens you're almost better off finishing in the top 40 every tournament and not making a top 10 as you are to make a top 10 and then bomb uh, you got to be consistent. Consistency uh, is rewarded in those opens. So, Marky Sparky, I appreciate it. I hope all bass formats do well. That's me, man. I like them all. And I'm not dogging Scott Martin. Scott's always been good to me. Uh, I'll, I'll go on record and say that, uh, you know, I like Scott as a person and, and a fisherman. He's always been good to me. Uh, maybe one of these days, me and Roland can share a seat somewhere. I don't know nothing about them Guggen baits. Yeah, dude, I like Castle Down. I hate that happen to him, and I like Upshaw too. But man, there's a lot of guys that put all their eggs in that Bassmaster basket. And what do you do if you don't make the Elite Series through the Open? What what, what do you do? I mean, you can't fish the Elites next year. Do you fish the Opens again? Um. I don't know. Hackney's going to go for broke, man. Uh, he's an awesome, uh, awesome dude. I like Hackney. So. KBD is with Lou's because Lou's on Strike King, and Strike King uh, is KBD's gravy train. And that was going to happen. I think everybody could see that. And maybe Darian is fishing just sells more quantum than KBD, so they're paying him. I don't know. I do not flip with a bandito bug. I didn't get to go flipping but once this year. And uh, I pretty much kept that stroke of crawl on the jig 
I, I got to flipping that divine uh, hybrid jig with a stroke crawl, and that was the deal, man. Trait Zaldane, um, no comment. Very nice person. I've talked to her one time, very nice. I like her husband, Chris. He's a cool dude. Um, man, I don't want to make this offensive, and I'm not going to. I think Trait's a great fisherman. Might be a little in over her head on the opens, and I don't mean that because she's a female. I mean it just, I think she needs a little bit more tournament experience. I could be wrong. Hell, I need more tournament experience, so please don't take that wrong. Uh, I, I wouldn't be ready for the fish in the opens. I'm no Jason Christie with a Y. I'd like to be doing some grass flipping. Boys, that shrimp is like crawling in me right now. It's hurting. I right, said Martins would be back for the next tournament. Uh, Aaron Martins? M-A-R-T-E-N-S? Y'all kill me when y'all misspell names because I'm trying. I think of other people, but dude, that's awesome, Tony. Underrated frog fisherman, Zach Burge. That dude is freaking awesome with a frog. He's gonna be on Ike Live tomorrow night, so make sure y'all check that out. I'm not buying no Guggen baits from Walmart. Challenge YouTube guys. I hear you. Hey, look, dude, if they made good baits and they worked, I'd let you know. I'm not afraid to say it. I actually like the rattling Ned. I think that was a good concept. Um, Bateman wants the best spinning rod. Dude, I'm not going to lie. I love my Tatula Cody Meyer Elite Drop Shot Rod. I can do a lot with it. If you have an unlimited budget, and NRX A22 DSR is the deal. Awesome. I'm glad Amart's going to be back, man. He's a great human being. Dude, I love the sensory rods. I, I'm gonna be honest. If I would just, I could just run six cents and dial rods, and then my budget rods are the sticks fishing rods. I like the sticks for ninety nine bucks. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, I actually really like their uh, cranking rod and that surface stick, dude. That's a great big top water rod. Dude, Burge is gonna get a big win. I promise you. What's the best way to fish for janks and grass when it's got an algae bloom and covered in goo? I know they're in there and tired of picking it off my bait. Man, grass, algae bloom? Ugh. I'm going to have to go with a frog or something very weedless or, or punching through a worm. Fernandez is doing good. He'll be back soon, I think. Guys, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I have got to go. I'll be back. But the daggum shrimp. Lieutenant Dan's about to make a jump off the cliff. I'll be back. I'll get Bateman Jr. on here. Um, so, we're going to talk about bay, and I think this is the bay we got. 
this one right over here. You can't quite see it because it's black and white. Black and black and purple and green and white. So I think I'm I like this color. I don't know if you gotta we already took this off, so if you wanna see the chat. Yeah, this one, um, purple, green, bottom is orange, I can see that, and, yeah, and it's made by the same thing. This one, I am not familiar with, but right here. Now y'all gotta see it. It's a pretty good color. It'd be good in a different. Go. A different. Here we go. This one. Hang on. So, you talking? Yeah. Yeah. I showed some base. You showed some base. Good job, dude. All right, guys. I'm back. Debate, debate man, junior. Uh, do good job. Let me know. You get spooked by an owl? The owls out there hollering and scare you? Is it loud? I got you. Whew. Boys, sometimes you get a monster grab you like that, it ain't fun. So, did, hopefully, Bait Man Jr. did a good job. I'm, I'm going through the comments. He, he can't read all the comments, but make a giveaway bo box. That's hilarious. So, Bait Man Jr. will come on your stream, Hella Bass. All you gotta do is ask. Whew. Man, I'm not gonna lie. I almost passed out. It was that bad. So. Um, Dad, so when I walked in the um, in, so when I, when I walked in the stairs, I saw like a gray thing, and it was like little, and it walked fast. You saw a great a gray animal, and it walked fast. It was a creature. That was an El Chupacabra. What is that? You don't know what an El Chupacabra is? No. Okay, I'll show you on YouTube. Showing them. Yeah, dude. Bateman Jr., good job. Got blow it up for me. Thanks, man. Bateman Jr. had a raffle. Did what was the spots? Two, three, four dollar spots. I am sweaty. I'm. I'm not gonna lie. I unleashed the fury. Uh, I was trying to hurry up. That's a good job. Bateman Jr. is actually pretty good. When we go in a tackle shop, he knows a lot of the baits. Uh, but he's trying to, he, he's learning, man, so he's only seven. He'll be eight soon. Uh, not everybody is uh, advanced. Woo!
What else are we going to talk about tonight? We've been on for about an hour now. Oh, yeah. I will definitely show him the Chubacabra. How much stuff did Bateman Jr. give away? I hope he didn't give away any of my uh, flat sides. I'd be upset. Uh, so, Bait Girl got into the flower at my house. Yeah. And she's gotten makeup. Yeah, Bateman Jr. always gets a cut from the stream. So when we go tackle shop, he gets what he wants. So. No, like it's right now. She got it all over. Oh really? You got stuff all over your face. Under yeah, like ice cream. Dad gum. He gave away everything. Well, it's funny, Billy. I'm gonna get some stuff from Bateman uh, Bass Mafia, and we're gonna give away some uh, mafia stuff. Uh, here pretty soon. Yes, I do watch Netflix. Uh, what shows have I watched recently? I have never watched Tiger King. I'm not going to lie. Um, I, I watch a bunch of old school stuff. Friday Night Lights is my favorite show of all time. Uh, it's amazing. The whole storyline, everything, great deal. Dude, that's right, Sean. I appreciate all you guys joining in every Saturday, Thursday nights, whenever I stream. Um, you know, some nights we break records. Some nights we get 1,000 people, 700. Some nights we get 200. Uh, ain't going to matter to me. I, I just like talking, man. I could talk to anybody. 283, smash that thumbs up. Appreciate all you guys. I've just got to do more videos. So I can't really say if this is going to happen or not. Nate Swan, I ain't got no beef with Duck at Rods, actually. Um, they do break a lot, the Ghost does, but to be honest, I really ain't got an issue with Duck at Rods. Uh, there's actually a few Duckets I really like. Um, um, what I was going to say is, I've got something in the works, um, and if it if it goes well and i got a few other things, there's a chance I'll be able to do YouTube a whole lot more. Um you know got to pray about it and some other things if it works out great if it don't um but i'd be kind of working for someone that's really really popular that's all i gotta say <laughs> that's hilarious new show new name the shit show sometimes the barking spiders do spike the viewers so uh What's a good price for a DT6? Dude, five to six bucks. Honestly, I've paid seven for them. Uh, TW had all those DT6s on sales at one time. Uh, that would be the best time to buy. So, Here's the thing. I do not mind watching a train wreck. Uh, any big worm tricks? I'd have to think about it. Um... Big Brat by Rapali. I like that bait. I need to buy a couple. I actually seen it in person the other day. Um, I, dude, I'd stream every night, man, if it was up to me. Uh, if I got, if I worked days, I would stream every night. Like, we would stream every night if I worked the day shift. I'm trying to get some. Is Scott Martin co-owner of Guggen Baits? I don't know. I'm going to guess probably. Um, but if all the Guggen kids and Scott are co-angler, who's, I mean, uh, I don't know. Usually the guy that owns 51% of a company is the guy that you have to worry about because he can buy anybody out. He's the, the I, I just want to know who's the majority owner of Guggen. Bait Jr. gave me Diable Fuego. Well, I don't have one no more, so I don't know where he got that from. I need some tape. tape? Yeah. What kind of tape? See if there's any blue tape, uh, you know, in our tape drawer. No problem, Hella Bass. Happy Father's Day to you, my friend. Guys, make sure y'all check out Hella Bass. Great dude right there. And let's give him some sympathy and a happy Father's Day. He dropped an SD card in the lake. I would not wish that around nobody. Shooter versus sniper opinions. I am a sniper guy. If I'm... Alright, that'll work. Hopefully we can launch this.
gear. I'm not sponsored by Flex Steel Tape. When you cast an X, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to try to stream on, if I don't work overtime, which I ain't going to lie, it seems like every place in the world is buying windows right now. So, I'm probably, there we go, we got her fixed now. <clears throat> it's not that I don't like these guys, but I'm kind of going on a strict, I'm not showing your logo unless you pay me deal. So, uh, and, 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 yeah, um, that way, uh, I'm not trying to be turged, but if I want to promote you, I'll promote you, and, um, uh, Yeah, so that's it, Nate. Believe it or not, a lot of our or orders we're getting are from places that unfortunately have, you know, had some rioting, looting issues. And I want to make this really clear. Daddy. I have nothing against protesting. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, but I really wish people um, would understand there's a difference between protesting and rioting and looting. I do not support rioting and looting. Dude, you can protest whatever you want. Really don't care. Just don't hurt no, no one. Um, I am not sponsored by Flex Seal, but dude, this stuff does work. It is good stuff. And it covers up logos pretty well. And I can still wash this cup. What's going on? What's up? Bait wife is teasing me. She's looking good tonight. But I'm not getting off the stream. Can you, can you give me one right here? My wife's going to come lay one on me right here. You got to move, bud. They said get that hot chicken here. Right here. Thank you. Say hi. That's when you know you got game when you're ugly as me and you pull a hot chick like that. Anyway, she's all about the baits. It's got to be your winning personality, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyway, when you throw a top water, do you... Do you put the hook on it that has a blade that flashes? Uh, I have not, um, but I think it's a good idea. Decoy in Japan is actually the first company that started uh, making stuff like that. So, What's my favorite scent attractant for bait? Uh, Strike Force. You can go to, I'm going to drop this right here, ignitebaits.com. They make swim baits. And use this code, jaint15, for... 15% off and they have some scent called strike force. That's the deal Dude fishing is slow. Mr. Drake Toby like it is real slow What is a good fluorescing line? You mean fluorescent line? Uh, I Used to like the old strand uh, fluorescent fluorocarbon um, Gamma had some really good fluorescent line. I like that. Now, um, I'm not sure. Get the bait babe on the stream. Yeah. I've got a bait named the babe. That's not my wife, but I would like to get my wife to stream all night with me. I'd probably have to load her up with tequila first. What's up, dude? What are you doing? What's in that cup? What's in that cup? Water. Water? Okay. I was making sure. You was why? making sure it was water? No, why was you making sure? I don't want you drinking adult drinks. Dude, and night swim baits are awesome as well. Um, yeah, Sunline Flipping Line is really cool. Uh, it's probably kind of one of my favorite fluorescent lines. I always get the garlic from Strike Force. It's awesome. Star Wars Theory. Uh, yeah, bud. Uh, we don't mess around with Star Wars. And here, you're going to get uh, removed. Those uh, we're going to have to block Star Wars Theory. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, put user in timeout. Matter of fact, I'm going to do more, more than that. Uh, hide user on this channel. He won't ever be able to be on this channel again. Wah, wah, wah. Hmm. 
Sniperhead 2.0, um, I don't have any, so I can't really compare them. Uh, I need to get with Tim. Dude, Scottsboro Tackle, are they, like, winning everything now? So, every time I see Scottsboro uh, Tackle, those guys are, like, winning Major League Fishing. Uh, they won the Bass Event, you name it. I blocked him, so... 343 after bait wife. We got to get her, her on here even more. So, my opinion about tactical bassing, uh, tactical is, is good people, man. Uh, Matt Allen, uh, good friend of mine. Tim's cool. Um, they got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, hopefully, we get Matt or Tim on the channel one of these days uh, on a live stream or podcast. Um, but so many people ask them. I know they've turned a lot of people down. Um, I don't want them to do any special favors. For me, um, that's right. If you make high quality stuff, you'll get noticed. Uh, I'm not going to do clickbait stuff, so um, that's just never going to happen. If I make something clickbaitish, trust me. When you watch the video, what it will be in there. I'm not going to make an icon that says "fishing a $600 swim bait" and throw it five casts. And it's a $50 bull shad. That's not going to happen. Uh, uh, the babe is sold out, uh, Clay. Um, I've got a few left over for myself. Uh, but they'll have another drop probably in October. Uh, I think they've already came through my area, Big Red Bass. Um, so what you're seeing on YouTube is kind of two to three weeks, uh, two weeks old. They're up north right now. Good reel for deep divers. Uh, man, I like a, anything with a 5 or 6 to 1. Tula one the Tula, Tula 150P is really good. Um, uh, the old Cronark E5s are really good deep diver reels. I think Matt is guiding, but he's doing kind of select guide trips. You know, he, he's, he's so busy with guiding, he can kind of pick and choose who he can uh, um, take out. I have tried to get them on Bateman Raw, and here Matt is exact words said, "Dude, you know I do it in a heartbeat, but we've turned down other people. Uh, we've got a lot of things going, and I don't want to be on your podcast and have to answer those phone calls, dude. You said you couldn't do a podcast, blah blah blah. I totally respond, respect that. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude." Pretty much, if you watch a tactical bass in video, you might as well just sink tackle warehouse with it. I'm the same way. When should I choose a Tula 150 or a 100? If you need more spool capacity, uh, I'm going to throw a little bit bigger line. Uh, it's a great swim bait reel, um, great Carolina rigging, uh, throwing bigger style baits, you can hold a little bit better high poundage line. That's when I like the 150. Or you're cranking so you can get a whole lot of 10 or 12 pound test on there. Yep. Yeah, that was a crazy deal. So when I did the stream with Matt Allen, it's, and you can look it up on YouTube, you can type Matt, Matt Allen, Bateman. Uh, it's on my Bateman playlist. Uh, like we went fishing on my birthday. It was November 27th. I remember it was a Thursday night, I believe. And we freaking smashed them at Lake X. Uh, and some of that footage has been on tactical uh, videos. You just don't know it. Um, we went ate a Mexican restaurant, and I said, "Hey, dude, I do a live stream every Thursday night. You want to do one?" He's like, "I don't know." And matter of fact, he's like, "Yeah, I'll do it." And and this was back in the old days on Facebook. Like, if you got a hundred viewers on live on Facebook, you're like freaking awesome. Me and Matt jumped on there, and we had like four hundred people watching uh, us, and I was freaked out. Now, saying that, if I was to get Matt Allen on here, I think we could break two to 3,000 people on a live stream. There's no doubt in my mind. Especially if Matt or Tim could share it. I think I could get Smallmouth Crush on here and we'd get 1,000. Uh, I don't know. It's it's something about the algorithm. You know, YouTube likes it when I stream. I don't know why. I'm not saying my stream's better than anybody or anything. But I've got something figured out on the al al algorithm for when I stream and all that, and it starts going hard. Dude, I, I, I definitely want to help people. That's the whole deal. Uh, I got to make some money. Uh, let's just be straight honest. Um, 
Yeah, dude. 450,000 followers. That's for... I'm not saying... I, I would love to get that level. Um, but, uh, dude, I just like to get to about 40, 50,000. But uh, I'm not going to, you know... Look, Matt and Tim, they don't collaborate with hardly anybody. I've not ever seen them do a collaboration. Their collaboration is taking people fishing. I get that. Uh, so that was crazy for Matt to show up uh, on that deal. And I really appreciate him for doing that. And, dude, I'm going to say I went fishing with Matt Allen. But, um, you know, I don't want to have to... Um, I don't want to have to go collaborate with people to get my subscribers up. You know, I would love to go. Here's the deal. I want to go hang out with Cole and Jay. Uh, they do stuff that I don't get to do all the time. I want to go wrangle some snakes, whatever. Uh, go down to Arkansas, stuff like that. And I want to do stump stuff outside the Bateman realm if I go collaborate with people. I don't want to just go sit and... No, now me and Epic Eric, yeah, we need to go travel the country and pick out baits, but... Um, you know, I'm going to go fishing with Milliken, not because Ben Milliken has a bunch of followers. I'm going to go fishing with Ben Milliken because he'd be fun to fish with. Like, we wanted to fish for years together. So, um, I'm the only streamer this time of night not talking politics, and we're not going to, bud. I've said my piece, and I'll tell you what, I've gotten to where I'm about to delete my Facebook. I do need to go noodling. Noodling is awesome. Uh huh. Some guys says. St. Chris, I got you, my man. If you're still watching the stream. Dude, I like I like Mikey Boss. He don't respond to my messages no more. Uh, I don't know why. Dude, we're going to get Debo on the stream. I think Mikey just gets so busy. Um, because he'll like my IG post. And I sent him a message. Um, I'm not going to go noodle with Hannah Barron. Um, my wife would not like that. Dude, yeah, me, uh, me and Eric need to have a show. What to look for, what to find in old baits, man. Uh, that's the deal. Uh, I kind of got a video. I really need to get it edited up tomorrow. Um, St. Crest messaged me, and he was looking for some baits. And, dude, I've got some. Uh, I, I, got, I know my dad has a bunch of packs of these things somewhere. Um, I'll go through after the stream. They're actually way back behind my streaming station under some stuff. I'll get them tomorrow. I'll message you a pic on Instagram. Make sure it's the right thing. I know what it is. Um, I'm not going to put your secret secret juice out there, though. Um, I like finding baits for people, man. Sometimes you get lucky and a guy names something and I got it. Uh, dude, Balls is just a good guy, man. I don't like his dog. Mm. Mm mm mm. We've been on for an hour and 22 minutes. Dang, that's a good looking photo. Anybody on here? Uh, anybody on here grab any of them Waterland sunglasses? Ooh. Robert Linson sends me Instagram messages some flat A's. Are these rare? Uh, sort of. Dude, I need some oat. Yum. Monkey balls. Crap. Yeah, dude. Man, Monty Mac still up in here. Uh, whew. There's no way I can go for three hours tonight. You ask my wife, I'm lucky to go for 30 minutes. Three hundred seventy-seven people watching. You know what's going to happen? It's going to be seven hundred very soon. Huge bluegill school at my lake, but can't fish. Why not? 
All right, good question. When you're going on, when are you going on Smallmouth Crush and Monterey and uh, Travis and Eric fight, man? Uh, I know Eric was want me to come on Smallmouth Crush uh, several times. Uh, it just never really uh, happened. Um, I don't, I don't think it's a bad reason why. I just think Travis got a lot of things going on, and it's no big deal, man. Um, I respect those guys, and uh, obviously me and Eric are cool, and I like Travis. We talk every now and then. Um, Yes, uh, so the, yes, they were flat A's in a semi-rare color, uh, but yeah, so here's the deal. My shoulder's really jacked up. I'm probably going to have to have sho shoulder surgery if I can't get it fixed with the chiropractor. My rotator cuff is freaking smoking. Yeah, you know, I did some vacuuming too. Uh, I actually vacuumed twice uh, in a day yesterday, so I can't rag Travis on that, man. Um, I love bluegill fishing. I need to get uh, get on some shell crackers or something for Bateman Jr. I think he'd have a great time uh, bluegill fishing. Uh, I've actually had a lot of people request bluegill videos. So. Drew, do you ever power shot, heavier drop shot with bigger baits? Um, I don't, um, too often. I have done it before, and I basically power shot a beaver bait. And I caught a few fish. No P.O. box yet. I'm going to get me one, though. I think I'm going to have to be, I, I don't know, I'm not as cool as uh, Darian is fishing and all the other people that got P.O. boxes. Uh, who's the other one that's got a P.O. box all the time? Uh... Cole and Jay have one, but they deserve a pill box. They got all kinds of... They get crazy stuff in the mail. Like, good, cool stuff. Um, shell crackers aren't much different than a bluegill. They're still perched. They just get a whole lot bigger. So, I think our bluegill are kind of half and half done. For the most part, they're done bedding them. So, What was the rig? Wide gap hook with... That is a Jika rig, Joe or jika jika rig it's a pretty cool deal it's kind of like the free rig i mess with darian because he's cool i like him like i'm one of those guys if i pick on you i like it that's the reason i mess with darian realist and and i'm not gonna lie he kind of rattled my cage when he said he was going to brand Saturday Night Live. I'm like, no, you're not, dude. You're not going to steal my time and deal and then brand it. I'll let him know it, too. So I fished a shad shaped worm on one ounce. Shad shaped worms are really good bait. So, You know what? No one sent me anything crazy, Sean. The coolest thing was, uh, and there, honestly, the reason I blacked this out is because my dude... Um, Brian Stuckey sent me the uh, he sent me the other cups that had the Bateman logo, and I didn't want him to think that I was shunning the cups he sent me because uh, the Bateman logo ones are cool. It's just what I had available. So how do I decide when I get a new bait if it's going on the wall or one of my Bass Mafia ba boxes? That's a great question. So for the most part, if I'm out of them, I don't ever put it on the wall. So I take all this stuff, if I go fishing, obviously I take it out of the box and put it in other boxes or I take the box with me. So let's say I run out of Jank Juice Provokes. It goes off the wall and goes into my box. Um, now, some of this stuff will go away. I'm gonna, Obviously, I'm going to put these balsa baits in their own box. Uh, I'll probably put this burning shad in some box. Or if I don't really have a place for it, like I don't really have a box for small wake baits and stuff like that, so I just kind of keep them where they're at. But I'll get one. Swim baits I don't put in boxes, so that's why I keep them on the wall when I want to go. I take them, I put them in a money bag, and keep my swim baits in their clamshells. So if it's on the wall, for the most part, either don't have room for it in a box. Or it's waiting to be replaced in a box. That, that's kind of how I do it. Now, spinner baits, buzz baits, I keep out over here for the most part. My soft plastics, you know, I'll pick them off, put them in a money bag as I go. 
or I put them in the six cents bag. I've got a bunch of these. Like, here's a good example. So I've got a bunch of prawns behind me. So right here, this thing's full. This is all six six prawns. And it's pretty cool. I'll label it up here. It says prawns. You can't see it because of the light. But this is all full of prawns. Uh, if I'm going to go fishing, I take this bag right here. Uh, and I can put it into a big Bass Mafia money bag. And so if they're flipping, I can put this in a big Mafia money bag. I can put my other plastics and be, be done. And I'm still organized. If Matt and Tim are smart, they won't come to Kentucky Lake because it's a freaking gar hole right now. But, um, you know, I'm not going to lie. The rumor has it. Rumor uh, Matt and Tim will be living on the Tennessee River pretty soon. Rumor. My top spinner, what's the best flipping hook? Personally, I like the owner jungle hook. That's my favorite flipping hook. And um, the mustad flipping hook's good. I had, I've got the six cents flipping hook. I just haven't got a chance to use it, but it looks really good. It's super sharp too. So that's the small bait bag. Uh, and then I've got the medium one as well. I did not talk to the guys at Badlands about a fishing backpack. Uh, I haven't sent them an email, Instagram message, or anything like that. So I have ate a gar. Honestly, not my thing. That's what I'm worried about is if my, I have rotator cuff surgery, is my shoulder going to be screwed for a long time? Because if it is, I'm just not, I'm just going to bear with it, I guess. Or take cortisone shots. I don't know big red bass. Like I said, it's just a rumor. I would bet it's a second place to stay. Dude, have I ever heard of a boy how to heck yeah, it's a good bait, man. Very underrated old school bait. The newest technique no one is talking about. I'll be honest, the free rig, and I don't know a whole lot about it, uh, is really a big deal out west right now. The free rig. It's kind of like. It's kind of like a cross between like a mojo rig and a Carolina rig. That's the best way I can say. Um, and I still think a lot of guys are throwing a Nico rig with big baits and not talking about it. So. When you flip heavy cover, do you prefer straight shank or EWG? I never use the EWG flipping heavy cover. Straight shank all the way. Thanks, Monty. I, I, like I said, if I get one doctor says we need to chop this thing, I'm going to go to two, maybe three doctors. Because I, anytime you go under a knife, I think you need a second opinion. Huh. Yeah, I'm going to put some, uh, what's that stuff, uh, biofreeze. It actually helps quite a bit. But, man, this thing has been so stiff. And I don't know if maybe it, I'm sleeping on it wrong. One day it'll be fine, not bother me. The next day it'll be, like, sore and, and just locked up. So, there you go. Uh, I I love the Ike in the Shot videos, to be honest. I've thought about doing videos like that. It's bait in the bait room. But I stream like this, so I'd have to do it at a different angle so it don't look goofy or something like that uh thank you one real always sweet like honey i appreciate that it's a hell of a facebook username uh, thank you so much for hitting the thumbs up and if you haven't hit the thumbs up anybody smash that thing for me dude chicken rig is fire uh, that's a good that's kind of like a weedless nico deal so Woo. let's see what time do we jump on here about 10 o'clock All right, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna stream all night, guys. Uh, I'd love to. How much? How many people we got rolling up in here? 377 people watching. Is that true? 
Oh shit, we got 441 people watching. Well, I guess we'll hold on just for a little bit, but. It's hard, it's hard for me to leave the people when I've got this many people in here, but I'm about out of ice and I really need something to drink. But uh, I'm going to be serious though. I'd love to. I have not fished the Tokyo rig yet. Uh, I'd love to be on here. I love having 450 viewers and all that kind of stuff. But here's the deal. I got to get Bateman Jr. to bed. Uh, I want to work on some videos and stuff like that, so I'm going to jump off here. I don't really have a topic, and I'm a lot better when I can talk about a topic for two hours and then jump off here, but here's the deal. Anybody on here that is a father, grandfather, I'll let you guys know, happy Father's Day. I hope you get um, some time with your family. Um, if you can't be around your family for whatever reason, I understand. Um but everybody have a good Father's Day or wish your father a happy Father's Day if you're not a father because obviously if you live here, you've got a dad. I understand some people have a dad and they don't talk to him. I got you. But anyway, y'all have a good day tomorrow. Uh, probably not going to do live. I've got to go back to work. But I might upload a video. I'm not sure if I will or not. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to talk to Byron Velvet. we got to finish our podcast as well. So Jerry Jr., that's hilarious. All right. Thanks, Easton. Guys, y'all have a good one. I appreciate y'all uh, every week, as always. And thanks for hanging in and letting Bateman Jr. do his thing. Um, I'll see y'all at least next Saturday night, maybe 